So it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, uh, Khalil uh, Manel. Uh, this is a very special man. This is a man who's completely given his life to God to be of the service to others. Uh, I'm a little bit of about his biography I just received uh, about uh, Khalid. Uh, he was born, I mean, he, moved, he was born in Haiti, uh, raised there. Uh, he was very inspired by his parents when he was growing up. His parents, dad was a deacon, his mom was a missionary. He watched them how they served others. And at a young age, he decided to turn over his life to Christ as well. Uh, in 1991, he moved to this country, learned to speak English uh, fluently, uh, went to the uh, Regent University, earned his bachelor's degree in science in 2005. Uh, he's currently working on an MBA in nonprofit leadership at uh, New England College. Uh, and in 2009, he was ordained by the Pentecostal Evangelical Church. He has founded an organization called Christians United for Haiti, and this organization is all about raising money and doing whatever they can to help the citizens of Haiti, especially in view of all the natural disasters that they've had there. But, uh, and he's come today with his uh, lovely wife, uh, Yannick, Yannick, sorry, and uh, their two children. So uh, it's with very deep honor that we uh, greet you, Manel, uh, to our uh, service today, Khalif, sorry, and we, uh, let's give him a round of applause. Good morning. Good morning. Let peace be with you. Let the light be with you. I am honored to be here this morning. I remember when I came here a few months ago when Gibson came from Haiti to visit and of course working. Because uh, when you're a missionary, you do not stop working. Uh, there's always something to do. You're always in a mission. And I remember meeting uh, some of you and I uh, could not wait to come back. And I'd like to thank uh, Bruce for this very kind introduction. Uh, I would like to uh, thank the staff and, and, and you all, the fellowship of uh, the Inner Light, for your warm welcome this morning when I came here with uh, my family. You all welcomed me, and I thank you so much. It was very, very uh, welcoming. Thank you so much. You made me feel at home. And I really enjoyed that meditation part, actually. <laughs> I, as somebody who's always thinking and busy minded, I, I spend some time every now and then. I go to the Buddhist temple in Carlton, Virginia, on a weekend just to meditate from Friday to Sunday. And I just go with nothing. I left cell phone back at home, laptops. I just go with my notepad and my Bible. And I'll stay there from a Friday to Sunday. And one time, me and the monk, we have a lot of conversations about peace and, 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 uh, and life in general. And he said, and I explained to him how I am, and to my boys working on something, he said, that is something you call a monkey mind. <laughs> <laughs> when you sleep, you're thinking. <laughs> so thank you for, for really blessing me and my wife with, uh, with this meditation this morning. I want to thank my family, my wife Yannick, who was here this morning. And our children, I uh, was enjoying uh, the class back there, so uh, thank you so much. It is an honor to share something with you. As, as a missionary, you're always working. Uh, there's no such thing uh, as a downtime, as such thing as a break, because there's always to be something to be done. And as I was meditating to share something with you this morning, I look at what we do, what I do, what we all are doing at the fellowship. We are just alive to serve. That's, that's who we are, that's what we do. And the word from the Bible, from Luke 4.18 that we'll look at and others will certainly show us that the example that we're following is about serving others. What else is there to do after you've done everything but to serve others to give back? So I really want to encourage you to, at this time, to start reflecting on your purpose. 
your, your now and your days ahead. Take a few seconds to think about what else can you do to make a difference in Virginia Beach, in Hampton Roads, in the United States of America right now, where we are facing what we're facing in, in Florida, or even in Hampton Roads, um, in Haiti. Let's reflect on our service because the one that will follow him came to give us life and we are the example of the one that will follow him. Let me just say this um, and, and if, if you know it by heart it's great. If you have your cell phone with you you can look at it. Your Bible, your holy book you can look at it but in Luke Chapter 4, verse 18. We come across when Jesus started his ministry, his service, he made a very bold declaration. And that set the tone for his service here on earth. And when we look at what he did, we said to ourselves, are we doing the same thing? Well, let's see what Luke chapter 4, verse 18, 19 says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In other words, he's, what, he, what he's saying from Luke 4.18, he's making a statement to the world. This is what I'm about to do. This is what I'm going to be doing. This is who I am. When you and I join a company, we go through a process of training, and they teach us the company's value, mission statement, customer service. If you're in the military, anybody here in the military? Anybody? Oh, I've been a Boy Scout, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so team workers. Uh, when you join a group, a corporation, a team, a military, you learn what that organization is about. You learn what the leadership is going to guide you to do. So. As we are following Christ, as we are following God, who are we liberating? Who are we proclaiming liberty to? What good news are we sharing to others? Questions to ask. Are we bringing joy and peace? Are we bringing relief to others with a hug, with a handshake, with a smile? with some material items, with the donations. Question, how many of you in this room have ever been to a mission trip? Anybody ever been to a mission trip? Wonderful. Well, you're all going to go because we have a mission trip coming up to Haiti soon, so we'll, we'll let you know the date in a minute. But have you ever felt sometime that you wish you could do more for somebody in a situation? Have you ever come across a situation where you, you wish, we use that, I wish I had more money, more time, more energy, more to do, more to give, I can't spend more time with them, and I wish I can, I can. How many of you have felt that you'll come short of, of really fulfilling sometime your purpose in a particular situation where you get a phone call from somebody and it completely down and you are that person that's going to be saying something to them that's going to save them from committing suicide. Have you ever felt like you come across a situation, you are the only person that is normal, everybody seems to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what in the world here? What am I doing here, God? Well, good question. See, when he brings you and I in a situation of trouble, then we bring the light, then we bring the peace, then we bring the joy to those that are afflicted, those that are in need. Oftentimes, um, 
my wife and I were driving and we were talking and, and we daydreaming that we wish we had more money. He said, man, look at this billboard. It says $500 million in a lotto. Man, we wish we had that. We could just like, you know, build this in Haiti and build clinic in there and then build roads. And we kept on wishing. And my wife and I said, you know, I remember so and so. I made sure that I, I, I helped them start a business there. I remember this pastor, I helped them to renovate the church. And we kept just building a list of projects to do. And we said, okay, God, how are you going to make this happen? Serving is about forgetting about yourself, like Jesus said, and serve others. For he said in Mark 10, verse 45, that for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom to me. Wow. Now most of us, most of us, me included, will question ourselves whether or not we should die for somebody. But while we are alive, what can we do to sacrifice an hour or two or two days or two weeks or two months to help at the local shelter, to help folks in Haiti? In the middle of your meditation this morning, think about tomorrow and next week and next month. What can you do to make a difference in a world that we are living in and everybody's looking for answers? And we are blessed to have some wisdom, some understanding to explain to them, to explain to the world, well, this can be done differently, this can be done better. You do not have to kill yourself. You do not have to go hungry. You don't have to sell your body. You do not have to sleep outside. Let me help you. For Jesus said in Matthew 26, 11, that the poor will always be with us. Now this is a bold statement for all of us. In the world that is loaded and overflowing with stuff and things and food and you name it and people have money don't know what to do with it and people have houses in every state and God bless them and but Jesus said way years and many years ago that we will always have poor among us. How's that gonna be possible? What's gonna happen? Why? 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 Well in another term let's flip it. That means that you and I will always have work to do. You and I will always be on a mission because you have some people who are poor in the spirit, some people who are broken financially, mentally, psychologically, some people who could not think about, okay, tomorrow morning when I get up, what's going to happen? Some people who totally lost hope, some people are asking themselves, what am I going to do? The poor is going to be always with us It's saying to you and I that you have not a part-time, not a full-time job, but a lifetime job on this planet. The challenge in the mission field is, is enormous. Um, and growing up, um, I grew up in the church all my life, uh, and I've watched and seen church service at the house, choir rehearsal, deacons meeting, you name it, um, people coming for prayer. But one thing is always for sure, I remember, people always considered the church, people considered the body as the emergency room, where they come and seek counsel, where they come and get some help. And it amazes me that today some people are pushing back on people like you and I when they should be embracing us. People try to separate who we are and what we are and say, no, we don't need you, or we, we, should, we should not be in this part of the program because we're going to do this. But wait a minute. The foundation of the world started with the word, with wisdom, that we ourselves are blessed to share and to carry. As I remember in, in many, many, many times when you go in the mission field, one thing that is the hardest part of being in the mission field, anybody here ever lost a cell phone signal at any time? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Anybody ever lost power? One, well, it's not the only one. You can probably make it through having no cell phone signal for a little while and no power for a little while, but what about this? When you 
come across some folks and they look at you and they say, don't forget about me. I know you're leaving and going back to the U.S., but don't forget about us. When kids are coming and just hug you and just hold you tight and give you a piece of paper, a memo that says, bring me a little toy truck when you come back. Some will give you a note and say, you are my only friend. Some will give you a note and call you daddy and mama and all kind of sweet, loving words that you thought that, oh my God, I was just here for seven days and 10 days and 15 days, I'm helping them. But to them, it meant a whole world of difference because you and I brought the light, the life to them. Because as a missionary, that's what we do. We bring the light to the world. I um, will encourage you that in the moment that you feel helpless and hopeless, to look within you to see that you have the greatest and the best in you, and that is the truth and the light that you can discern. This week, last week, has been pretty much very hard on me. Uh, I don't know if you've been watching the news or online, but you all heard about the earthquake that took place in Haiti. 300,000 people died, about 2 million homeless, and catastrophe just piled up. And for the last eight years, people kept asking me wherever I go, how things are going, how things are I said, well, we, we try to get there. Because I go back and forth between Virginia Beach and Haiti, and I go other places to speak, I'm raising fun and support. But the last couple of weeks, a bombshell exploded in the media. People like you and I were entrusted to serve others have been abusing women and girls. Those that were entrusted with millions of dollars to go to Haiti and serve. Now, if you go online, you search Oxfam, Haiti, Save the Children, Haiti, World Food Program, Food for the Poor, and many, many other multinational, big uh, charitable organizations who has millions in, in their bank accounts. The list goes up and up and up as now they're finding out victims are coming out says they used to come to the tents, they pick us up, we go to the hotel, they pay us, they come by, they give us food, they say if you don't take the food, if you want food then you have to get something else, yourself pretty much. It's talking about the videos and journalists are flooding into Haiti right now because the British newspaper broke the news in Oxford and they find out the Red Cross was involved, and others was involved, and others was involved, and then people now start stepping forward. And the women who have shelters in Haiti said, okay, we got to it's like another Me Too movement. But this time it's the poor of the poorest. And people were saying, well, I didn't have anything, so yeah, they said either I give myself or food, or no food. I give myself, I don't get no aid or no help. So what do you do when you live under a tent? And I've been to several of those tents in Haiti. I was in Haiti about 11 days after the earthquake. My friend and I, we, uh, he was part of the organization, he moved to Texas now. Uh, we flew into Dominican Republic because Haiti's airport was so crowded with military airplanes, relief airplanes, international organization airplanes. They stop all commercials, American Airlines, Delta, no one can go there unless you are military or you're some part of an international relief organization. So my friend, we flew into Dominican Republic next door. We stayed there overnight. With no way to know how we're gonna to get to Haiti, all we know is gonna take a seven hours drive to get to Haiti. Right? I said, we're gonna do it, Joseph. That was my friend's name. We got there, and the night that we landed there, with broken Spanish, we were able to end up in a hotel. In that hotel, there was a security guy who was from Haiti, but he was living in the Dominican Republic. He was part of the, 
Dominican police force. He started helping us. Then the conversation went on where he went and asked his boss, can I take a few days off so I can go help them? So he drove into Haiti with us seven hours. We stayed there for about 15 days. We went to the hospital. We went to the tent cities. People were totally, totally desperate. If you remember New Orleans, Louisiana, and, and what happened recently with the flood in Texas, people will do anything to get a piece of bread, some water. That was Haiti then. Now when you look at the newspaper last few weeks, you, you start looking online actually to be exact, you are reading the stories and I see myself, I said, wait a minute, I know that Kansas City, I've been there right across from the Dallas. I remember that one, a golf course in, in the upper uh, town of Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge, Haiti. Now you're reading, those who are entrusted with millions and, and funds to help the poor, they were abusing them. We pray for them, we pray that God will forgive them, but we pray for the victims because now they have to live, live with this for the rest of their lives. But as missionaries, it makes all our jobs harder now because we're going to have to first win their trust again. Even myself, even I'm from there. I've been to part of Haiti well. They, they asked me, what's your motive to come to this neighborhood? What's your intention? You know, just because we have light and love inside of us, we're not going to be always welcome everywhere. Jesus was not. But through our works, they will accept us. We can't say we have it and then it's not. But let me just share with you that in helping, in serving the life that we have right now, there are promises that God have laid out for us. In Proverbs 22 and 9, he promised this. Whoever has a bountiful eye will be blessed, for he shares his bread with the poor. That's for you and I. There's a blessing when you bless those that don't have anything. In Daniel 4, 37, he says this, Therefore, O king, let my counsel be accepted to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness in your iniquities by, by showing mercy to the oppressed, the poor, that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. So God is serious about taking care of the poor. He will bless you. He will bless me for taking care of them. He will let in our prosperity. We will have more when we give. And I heard people say all the time, we have two hands, one to give, one to receive. But here's the one that I like. And Psalm 41 and 1, he says, Bless he who considered the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. God will remember you and I in time of trouble because we have helped somebody when they were in need. And you know this is a promise that he's not going to break. This is a promise that he's going to stand on. As we continue to serve others, I encourage you to remain in the Word because that's where you're going to find the strength, the energy, the love that will fuel you so you can share with the world. Because they need it today more than ever before. And this promise that he gave us, it is clear that you and I can go back in our life, we can see that we have overcame certain challenges. As a missionary, I'll tell you so many times I get a mission field with very little, and I've seen things getting done, I don't know how it happened. But I know, I know it was in my power, my understanding, because who am I? But when we rely and we put everything before God, He will bless, He will make you prosper. Just to finish, I want to just encourage you uh, to continue to do what you're doing here at the fellowship. Um, you will bless, you will prosper. Um, you will see many, many children come out of church and go out. Your work is touching many locally, internationally. What you're doing here is transforming lives. I've seen it. Uh, Gibson was here. You should see the farm that he, he developed. Um, I've seen the pictures. He is, he is making a big impact 
in the south of Haiti in that city called Lekai. So I, I want to thank you. I know he's going to come back one day to thank you, but I'm thanking you for him in advance because me and him, we stay in contact. Uh, he developed the farm, he got the school going, he got the chicken farm, he's planting, he's growing, he's teaching others, he's expanding. He's expanding. And then because of your efforts. So I thank you on behalf of Gibson and people of Haiti. As I mentioned, um, we do have a mission trip coming up. It's, uh, it's going to be March 31st to April 7th. And we intend to go and, and help the clinic and, and the church that we started building. The clinic is, has been in existence for a few years. And about six years ago, somebody who went to Haiti with us um, gave scholarship for a young lady to go to nursing school. Now she became a nurse, she's working and trying to keep up with the, with the clinic. The other sister also is a nurse, but working and trying to keep up with the clinic when they can. The challenge they have is there's people that go to the clinic <laughs> They don't have enough to pay. And we all heard the numbers of what poverty and Haiti employment is about 75%. Uh, most folks are making about $10 a month, $20 a month. Um, so what they're asking us to do is help them to renovate the clinic. And what they need is the basic. Replace the doors, get new beds and desks, um, get the generator, a water tank um, up on the rooftop, um, help them to install the lighting system, and get some medication more on a daily basis for the pharmacy. And we've been trying to push that. And I said, we've been trying, there's so many needs coming through, sometimes we don't wish one to touch. And we said, you know, let's go and try to make this happen because one, this is gonna save lives. Because a woman comes to the clinic and gives birth. If you ever had a chance to Google Haiti and birth rate, Haiti, um, maternal de death rate, you see that many women are died while giving birth. Many women are giving birth on the bare floor, country floor, in the hospital because of the lack of. But we, we believe that we can do it. The clinic is, is in that kind of need um, to renovate today. Um, they're looking at a total raising of $17,000, which is not a lot to renovate the clinic. Thank uh, God, because the clinic has already been built, the structure, it just needs to be uh, renovated and maintained. And the monthly expenses regularly based on the amount of people they see and the medications and the women that come to and give birth and cleaning material, disinfectant, electricity, uh, water, and two nursing and a doctor is about $2,500 per month to maintain that clinic. So we are asking you to think of how you can help, how you can be a blessing to this clinic. And if you'd like to go to Haiti on mission trip, what is this one coming up, the next one, let us know because uh, at, we have a table outside with a partnership form. Take one, fill it out, put it in the mail, send it to us, or take one, fill it out, give it to us. Let us know where you see yourself fit. Would you like to be an ambassador to go out and represent Christians United for Haiti and, and raise awareness and funds on, on your spare time? Uh, would you like to be a financial partner to say, you know what, I contribute an amount monthly or on this particular project? A prayer partner, a project partner, mission supply station. Mission supply are critical because when we go on the mission trip, people calling, what do you need, what do you need? That's one, but where should I take it? Because Everything we have, we all volunteer base, everything goes out. We don't have an office. So we meet at different churches. So this, this particular location can be a drop off site. So I encourage you to take one of these sheets to fill it out and you can give it back to me or my wife or you can mail it back. But certainly at the table outside, you find my business card, the partnership form, and today if you can um, donate the support, we'll be happy. Uh, we thank you so much. If, if in the future you want to surprise us when we open the mailbox and I make a baby dance, yeah! please do because it will come on time. And I'll tell you so many times I went to the PO box and I'm getting calls and texts, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Haiti. And then I went to the PO box and I find $100 or $200. We just recently sent $200 this past week to Haiti because there were uh, a group of students uh, from the church that wanted to go to a camp. 
then they have no money. It was carnival time in Haiti, everything shuts down, so their plan is to leave their city and go in the countryside and do some work. And they needed five hundred dollars. So we sent two hundred and somebody else sent the, the, the rest. And they were able to go out somewhere and, and help. So any amount will help, any amount will go a long way, but more importantly, your partnership. Um, if you have some expertise in some area, you want to talk with me, sit, um, have a meeting, invite me um, to your local group, whether it's the PTA, an association, the Sonic Temple, uh, or, or whatever group, maybe neighborhood association, let me know because that's, as a missionary, I'm always working, I'm always on the road, uh, to and from praying and seeking help for Haiti. The table is outside, um, as I mentioned, and we certainly want to encourage you again today reminding you that we were born to serve. If there's anything that we can do is to serve somebody with a handshake, with a hug, with a smile, with whatever we have, because nothing is too small. Nothing is too little. Remember the last thing that what happened, Jesus was serving even his own presence among people. People were just touching. He was such a servant to touch his robe and then feel better, they were healed. Imagine that, that everybody will come and hug you one day, you and I, because they know if you get a hard handshake from us, they'll feel better. Amen? So thank you so much for uh, welcoming me for this um, time. And I do hope that something that I have said have blessed you. I do hope that something I have said have enlightened and, and, and give you more fuel to go out there and make a difference. And I want to thank you again, the fellowship, for this welcome. And have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you.